the colour green. What do you guys think of when you think of the colour green? To me, I think of jealousy. That horrible emotion that none of us wants, but a lot of us still get at some point in our lives. Or grass. Or trees. There's quite a lot of things that are green, really. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now, we have two different species to feature in today's green video. There was supposed to be, well there was actually supposed to be two, but one of them I lost the footage of. It gets explained in the videos, but there are still two different species for you to look at. And one of them I'm super excited about. So let's crack straight on with the footage taken from the green animals in my animal hall. Okay, so this is the first animal under green and it is the first arboreal enclosure that we have had on this series. Would anyone like to take a guess as to what's going in here? It's got all the essential needs of isopods, perhaps even millipedes in a small scale, and cockroaches. Would you like to pause the video and take a guess as to what's going in here? It is more cockroaches. We've got giant banana roaches here. So you've seen banana roaches on the channel before and they were the P. nivea or Panchlora nivea. These are the P. species giant. So they are unidentified uh, taxonomically speaking as of yet. Now we'll go into the differences between them in just a moment. Now this was actually an eBay purchase and after this eBay purchase, I ended up buying some more because I absolutely fell in love with them. Look at them, beautiful green with kind of see-through wings and a yellow banding around the sides and the head. So what's the difference between a P. nivea and a P. species giant then? Well, you can see a mature female, which is what we've zoomed in on here, and then above the mature female is a mature male, so it's a comparable size difference. So the difference between these guys and the nivea are that the nivea adult females are roughly the same size as the P. species giant males, and the Nivea males are even smaller, which leaves the P species giant females to rule the roost as the biggest of both species of banana roach. I think these guys are awesome, they're almost alien, and they just don't stand by your typical appearance of cockroaches. I think that they, they are just, they're a lot lighter than things like emerald roaches, but they have those lighter legs, they've got those lighter colours, those more popped colours than I think emerald roaches. And these guys are also suitable for feeders, really good in things like arboreal tarantula homes, well, small arboreal tarantulas, um, and other animals that can climb to reach them when they flutter about. So dealing with these guys is an absolute, complete and utter pain in the bum. So you can see I'm doing it with ease here. I'm simply just popping this one in and the rest aren't escaping. And the reason for that is I am doing it in the middle of the day, which is the best time for you to do your maintenance, feeding or dealing with these guys. And that is because they are a nocturnal species. So in the day, they just kind of chill out. They're a bit more lethargic, they're a bit more tired and they just really kind of mosey on about slowly around the enclosure, unless they're too disturbed, of course. But if you dealt with these guys in the middle of the night, they would be flying, they would be running, they would be escaping, they are very, very quick, they are very good flyers, and they are incredibly good climbers too. Now their nymphs are brown, and the nymphs don't really climb as such, they tend to stay burrowed in the substrate, and they cannot fly, of course, because they have no wings at a nymph stage. But the adults can be a complete and utter nightmare. So I do have to apologise about any background noise you might be hearing. I've actually been filming this voiceover just at the same time some kids decided to play basketball outside of the house, so you have my apologies for that. Now unfortunately there was a second species of green that I'm unable to include in this video now. It were some millipede species from Venomous Visions and I actually lost all the footage, or accidentally deleted all the footage. And these millipedes have burrowed down and I really didn't want to disturb them for the sake of a video. 
and they didn't happen to have arisen up in time for this video to have come out. But I did actually pick up something different a little bit later. So we do have a second species to show for green. I didn't want to just leave you guys with banana roaches knowing, we, knowing that we have seen something very, very similar only a few weeks ago on the channel. So what is going to be our second animal then? Let's take a look at that now. Housed temporarily for the moment, which we'll get to later, in this vivarium is in fact a species of stick insect, the Parachifocrania major. Now this one is a mature male and I can tell that by his slender appearance, long antenna and the fact that he has fully developed wings there. And you can always tell the difference between a male and a female on most stick species because of that bump on the underside of the abdomen. Pretty cool, right? So as we move on, here is the female. Now she is sub-adult and I can tell she is sub-adult because she only has little wing buds. She doesn't have fully developed wings yet. Now I was fortunate enough to get my hands on these because of two very important people. One, Curtis Lakin, who actually breeds these. And then my friend Beth from Arachnobeth's Pets, who went to the Western Invert Show and picked these lovely pair up for me. Now, although the female is sub-adult and the male is mature, Curtis has assured me that should the male pass before the female matures, he will pass me some over of this species. Now, these are a very skittish species. As you can see here, I was trying to get him to show his wings to you. And although they weren't fully stretched, you can still appreciate the color on them. Now, handleability is difficult. As I said, very, very skittish. The male seems to be far more skittish than the female though. Now these are very, very sought after. In taxidermy, you often see them in frames and people spend a huge amount of money, in fact, on this species framed with their wings stretched out. Now, of course, this is not why I purchased mine. I purchased them because they are just nowhere to be seen in the hobby usually. So for Curtis to have these is a miracle to me. Now you can see as I'm touching the female there, she's a lot less disturbed by me. A lot less skittish. I'm trying to show you her underside because it's not all green. There are patches of beige under there too. And she still has some of those little spiny lumps going on her underside. Quite often you'll find on sticks that the spines are always on the top. All the lumps and bumps. She's pretty epic, right? So fingers crossed guys that she matures happily and that we manage to get some over from this species for our Project Paradise. It would be such an honor to be successful with these guys. Now, if you wondered why I said this was a temporary home, it's because this species likes a lot of ventilation, whereas the Exoterra doesn't quite provide as much as I'd like. So I will be putting them in a new one. Curtis has also informed me to make sure there's plenty of food plant in their enclosure as they do tend to wander and believe it or not sometimes sticks will wander too far and just not eat. So hopefully I get these guys set up in their new home soon and we can watch their progress. I'll try and put a community post up when the female matures so you can see what she looks like. So make sure to stay tuned to that too. So there are our two species under the green category. So, what did you guys think of those green animals? Now the roaches are doing absolutely fine. I did find one on the curtain the other night, so there may be a slight gap in the enclosure somewhere, or perhaps it's been during maintenance. I did say they do get out pretty easily. As for the stick insects, they were actually purchased, oh, I cheated a little bit, okay, they were purchased slightly after this original date for this animal haul, so I haven't had them that long since doing this recording. They seem to be doing well, the female has not yet molted, but keep your fingers crossed with me guys that we managed to get that female molted while the male survives and we have some over. So if you've been watching every single one of these series, let me know in the comments below because the next color will be our 10th episode. 
10 whole weeks. I'll see you next Sunday for that one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.